Hello everybody, this is Debo of Debo's Movie Reviews here, and this week's review will be G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra, directed by Steven Summers, starring, of course, Channing Tatum as Duke, Dennis Quaid as General Hawk, Carolina Krakova as Cover Girl, which that was a bit part, Rachel Nichols as Scarlet, Sienna Miller as Baroness, Lee Byung Hun as Storm Shadow. Christopher Eccleston as Destro. Joseph Gordon Levitt as Cobra. With Marlon Wayans as, as Ripcord. And Jonathan Price as the President. As much as I kind of want to see a live action Joey G.I. Joe movie, yeah, I'll give this one a bit of a. A for effort, but completely complete shit on the source material with some miscast characters. I mean, for one thing, I kind the whole kind of a missed opportunity to cast Scarlett Johansson as Scarlet. See him better. I mean, for an actress who's known for a blonde, I mean, she, she looks better as a brunette, so. She did a decent job as Baroness, so. But not some, still not the first person I would, I kind of thought would have been for it. And I mean, kind of like, yeah, they could almost re redo it now with, re kind of like, with that other Snake Eyes movie, which would be for another review. I think like they should have just missed the opportunity to put Emma Stone and Cat Dings together. As Baroness, and I admit the whole and the whole relationship playing with the between Duke and the woman who became Baroness. Yeah, I kind of see why Channing Tatum didn't like, didn't want to, hated doing being Duke. Just that, and he just didn't have lead man persona. Although I do say, and especially with like Jorson Gordon Levitt as Cobra. Yeah, I could have seen him at like the. Before transition, kind of like the whole the good guy thing, and feel like yeah, he could have been a better Flint. But I'll give it to Dennis Quaid. He knocked it out of the park as as General Hawk, leader of the GI Joes. And I kind of would have thought there'd been a missed opportunity to bring in some some of the better characters like like Spirit, Shipwreck, and Gung Ho. Hell, even Wild Bill, which of course Flint and Lady J were saved for the sequels, along with Roadblock, which of course will be for another video. And I got to give it to Ray Park; he knocked it out of the park as Snake Eyes, which went. Which is already an easy task, given that he don't he didn't speak. But really, that they had the whole. It looked like they used a a Black Ranger costume and just painted it completely over with a whole lip piece. It's about like bat nipples. Yeah, and I could have expected someone like Clancy Brown to be the voice of Cobra. So, I like the reimagining, especially since it was more towards the kind of like the kind of predicted how how Cobra would be depicted in Renegades, especially with, with like how they do with, did the whole nanite thing, which which of course is like like the comic version of Bloodshot. And and I gotta give it to Marlon Williams. He he did a fun part as a comic relief character, but seriously, the whole bar portrayal of Baroness. I mean, could have been better, but could have been better. I mean, just whole, especially with that whole. Romance playing. You know, like 
the man who became Cobra was her brother, and and then all of a sudden she becomes like he, he meets Doctor Mindbender on a mission, turns traitor for for money, which which almost makes you think in that you know timeline, the real head of Cobra was Doctor Mindbender. And surprisingly, how they didn't acknowledge the existence of major blood in this, this, this movies, and and of course Zartan was the only dreadnought, knock, which is think bit fitting since since Cobra was a high like the equivalent of Spectre, especially with that underwater layer. And the uh, gene splicing. Kind of like different Bond villains rolling in a run. So while Zartan takes on the identity of the president for the sequel, build up to the sequel, then of course. Of course, you got. Damn. Brain fart here. Damn. I was a brain fart, brain fart. Yeah, and I gotta get, but I do give it to the, the Snake Eyes, giving true to his origin and the rivalry of the brother, of the step brothers. And how one betrayed the master and blamed the other. The, the whole vile silence thing was kind of ridiculous when it was just. When in the other adaptations, in, a, in the fight, he had his storm shadow cut his throat and where he couldn't talk. And of course, the Snake Eyes of the movie explains the whole, whole deal with there and a lot better than, than this one did. Yeah, but I do give it just as the Destro and makes you wonder how the hell, how the hell besides the magic of car animation where he has that metal head but talks, which is kind of like a nanite mask, product of Mindbender or Cobra. Which, surprisingly, Joseph Gordon Lett was just kind of just Underwhelming. Just don't not see him as a bad guy. But I give it some excellent action scenes. Especially like in the, like the cartoons where they actually hit their targets. Because unlike the one where it was obviously a kid's show where they couldn't kill or anything and And I'll give the action they delivered, especially with the whole, with the gadgets and such. Especially those robo suits, that exosuits that turned them into the Flash. And the night, night thing, and. Which, of course, led to how Destro was. became Destro. Which, of course, had the beginning and the origin, whereas the ancestor who was. Who was in the best in prison in the Bastille in a take on Man in the Iron Mask, which is what he's based on. But the whole best the rehashing of the whole of Goldeneye with the best friends turned enemies and the and the relationship deal with where Baroness before she became Baroness was like Duke's wife to be. Then all of a sudden, her brother fakes his death, and then he go he goes Jimmy Hoffa on her. It's for a while you almost have him think that Duke was the real villain of the movie, just because of how the whole deal with Baroness turns evil over a broken heart. Yeah, that made more sense with for Mystique in the X Men movies, and I'm talking about the Jennifer Lawrence ones. Hell, 
But I do give Rachel Nichols her, her credit for being being Scarlet. So missed opportunity for for ScarJo, but I'm pretty sure they didn't they couldn't afford her. Her and hey, she she made her she made her name for herself as Black Widow though. And Sienna Miller, I give her her credit. And, and yeah, they could have just. And I'm kind of looking forward to that GI Joe Transformers movie, but but yeah, they ought to at least do a make a Danger Girl movie first. If you haven't read that comic, now if you haven't read that, if you've read that, you'd be surprised there ain't a missed opportunity between. They had a missed opportunity there to between character Sydney Savage and. From Danger Girl and Baroness to do like a a Batman in take the Spider Man mean going stop each other going nice outfit. But overall, I'll give a GI Joe Rise of Cobra a three out of five. Great nostalgia vibe and fan service, but just, just of course it's built up to a, built up to a sequel. All right, y'all. I'll do it for this week. Do it for this week. Like, subscribe, and enjoy. And and, com and do please drop some recommendations in the comments, and I'll keep dishing them out.